This is a brief description of the setting and the problem that Nobel Prize winner Jim Heckman was trying to address in his famous sample selection model. And to clarify, in his case, sample selection referred to missing Y data, but the X variables were all still observed. So imagine we are trying to learn about the relationship between wage and education. And if we could observe uh, everybody, we would get something, let's say, roughly like this. Right? It's generally uh, some sort of increasing pattern. Now, by wage, I don't actually mean the wage somebody's earning, but the wage that they would be offered by a firm. Uh, so you can imagine, you know, you go to a firm, you say, here's a potential worker, how much would you be willing to pay this worker? Now, in some cases, that amount may be very low and there is a minimum wage in the US and other countries. So if there's somebody whom the firm would be willing to pay but the wage would be below the legal minimum wage, then that individual would end up unemployed and we would not get to observe them in our sample. So in this case, all three of these are values that we would like to have to answer our economic research question, but they are values that we will not be able to see in the data, or at least we'll maybe be able to see their education level, but we will not be able to see the wage offer, the Y variable. And so there are other people whom we will observe both their education and their wage. There might be other people who are, let's say this person, uh, the firm would be willing to hire them for let's say a dollar above the minimum wage, but that's not high enough for the person to take the offer. So in other words, their reservation wage is higher than what they were offered. So you can imagine this could be true if, for example, uh, the person has multiple young children at home, and if they're only going to get paid you know, $12 an hour to work, and then they have to turn around and pay $20 an hour to get childcare for their children, and maybe they have other transportation expenses to get to their workplace or to get the children to the daycare, um, or higher food costs because they don't have as much time to cook at home things like that, you can imagine uh, it's just not worth it to that individual to work for uh, that wage when they then have to spend even more than that just to be able to go to work. So someone like that uh, will also not be employed outside the home, and thus we would not be able to observe the wage offer because they're not working at that wage. So they would also end up outside the data set. There could be even someone, you know, with a higher uh, wage offer, but again, who just has an even higher reservation wage. So they, uh, it's not worth it to them to take it. So we'll get a mix of, um, you know, observed values and unobserved values, and uh, as usual, and we might imagine you know, more of the lower ones closer to minimum wage or 
unobserved, but maybe not all of them. Uh, but as usual, that can sort of bias our results. If we just run a regression with the solid dots, you will know, we'll get something like that, whereas if we had the full sample that we wanted to answer our economic question about wage offers, we get a much more positive slope. So it's important to first recognize this potential bias, and then um, if the assumptions and the conditions are satisfied, uh, use an approach like Heckman's to try to correct for it.